thank you for attending everybody. Um, just a few housekeeping rules before we start. Uh, everybody will remain on mute for the whole webinar. Um, if you do have a question or a inquiry about anything, please use the question box. Um, all questions regarding the actual demo and the content uh, will ask so after the demo, um, but feel free to put them in as we go. Um, if the answer does require something a little bit longer, um, we will answer that directly offline afterwards. Um, please note that a link to view the webinar recording will be sent to all attendees after the demo. Okay, so uh, this is the 26 in the series of monthly webinars on key areas of NAV and Business Central. And you can sign up for as many as you like on our website, but I'll show you a list of the upcoming webinars at the end of the session. So my name is Karen. I'm going to be facilitating the demo today. I'm an account manager here at T-Vision. I've worked here for nearly three years, and my background is 20 years in software account management experience for ERP companies. Ian's going to be doing the demo today and he's a support consultant here at T-Vision and he's been working here for nearly four years and has been using NAV since 2000. So this webinar is all going to be about T-Vision's credit control notepad add-on and how it helps to enhance your credit control processes. Whilst there is a level of credit control within standard NAV and Business Central, such as the age debt report, What's missing is the ability to put in notes and assign tasks against invoice or customers. And this means that you may not be able to know exactly who is chasing which clients, about what, and the action that should be taken and whose responsibility it is. So that's where T-Vision's credit control notepad comes in. It also provides you with a dashboard, which means that a credit controller can have a specialized view with the required tasks, the status, and helpful analysis all on their welcome screen. So these are the top five things that we're going to discuss about the credit control notepad today. So firstly, what is standard in Business Central? Secondly, we're going to show you the additional functionality, which is in T-Vision's credit control notepad. So these are the areas such as payment history, trends, outstanding issues, credits, notes and tasks, which also includes promised payments. Then we're going to talk about what the best ways of using it are, how it interfaces with the role center, and finally, how you can actually get your hands on it. Okay, so just before um, we actually do the demo, um, I'd like to launch a poll just to find out how difficult you currently find meeting your KPIs for debtor days. So I'm going to launch the poll now, and if you wouldn't mind putting in your answer, that'll be great. Okay, I'm just going to collect a few responses just to see what the answers are. Okay, so at the moment it seems a bit of a split between um, we don't always meet our KPIs but we have all the information and we don't always meet our KPIs and we don't have all the information. Okay, no problems at all. So now I'm going to hand over to Ian to do the demo. And OK, Karen, can you see my screen? Yes, I can. OK, excellent. Hi, guys. Uh, thanks for joining today. Um, I'm doing the demonstration today on um, Business Central SES. Um, what I'm showing you also works on Business Central on-premise um, and also on versions of NAV um, after 2013 has similar functionality, but some of the bells and whistles, you need the later versions of NAV for them to work. Um, the first thing that you'll notice, I've logged on to my system here um, as a credit controller. So that's the first thing that we offer is a new role center called credit controller, which has information relevant to your credit control department. So immediately you can see all of my actions and my menus are related to credit control, looking at customers, bank accounts, cash receipts, sales invoices, etc. cetera. Um, up at the top here, um, you will notice that you have two different ways of looking at your customers. The customer's standard list, this is what you will be used to if you are using a standard uncustomized version of Business Central or NAV. Um, you see your customers, you can see the balance for that customer and the balance due for that customer. 
um, but that's pretty much all that it shows you. Um, it doesn't tell you if there are overdue payments or anything like that. Um, so what we have done, we have added another way to look at the customers with aging included. So I'm seeing the same customers again. Um, I can see their balance, but now I'm seeing that balance broken up into the aging bends. So just at a glance, immediately I can see that School of Fine Art, they seem to be a little bit behind on their payments. They've gone into the um, 60 to 89 days column for something. Uh, this is an interactive list, so I can actually click on that number and it will drill through the system and it will bring back the invoice or invoices that are overdue. Um, so I can quickly navigate and see what's on that invoice or if there's anything that looks a little odd. You'll notice there's also a column that says all actions um, with numbers in. This is the number of interactions we've had with the customer from the credit control department. We'll have a look at that again in a short while once we create an interaction. On the home screen, you'll notice there's some new tiles. So we have an activities, my actions, and this is showing me any to-dos with a customer relating to credit control that I need to follow up. And I can see I have two to-dos that I need to be following up on. And again, it's interactive. I can click on this and it brings me through into those to-dos so that I can have a look at them. And we also have an agreed payments section. So this is where we have spoken to a customer and they have confirmed that they're going to pay um, some money over. And again, we can drill down and we can see for which customers, which invoices have they agreed to pay. And we also get a little KPI over here, which talks about our debtors days. Um, so most credit control departments have some KPI where they need to keep their debtors days below 30 or something like that. Um, mine's currently showing me 60, so my company's not doing too fantastic. And again, I can drill through and it will show me those payment histories so I can see where it came with those numbers. Also on my home screen, I have a list of my customers. So these are the customers that I'm responsible for, not every customer for the company. And again, I can see my customers, I can see their balance. It is broken down into aging bends. And this list of customers, it's fully customizable. So I can manage this list. I can add new customers, take customers off, um, and it becomes my list of customers. My colleagues, they would have a different list of customers. I get my key performance indicators over here. So at the moment, it's showing me a cash cycle chart. So I can hover over any of these things. It will highlight the line in question. And I can see my payments. Um, they're starting to tick up over here in the past month. Um, and again, this is a customizable chart. If I'm not happy with this chart, I could look at a different view of the information. So I'm looking at my total receivables per month as we head into the future. I also have my report inbox if I have any reports that are waiting for me. And if I had timesheets to do, I'd be seeing my timesheets down here as well. Um, so how does the functionality that we offer, apart from having a nice friendly looking screen that gives some extra information, um, we have the ability to record interactions with our customers. So we um, noticed a few moments ago that uh, we've got one customer who's looking like they're falling behind on payments, the School of Fine Art. Let's go and have a look at this customer. And you will notice when I click on this customer, the view of the customer has slightly changed. So on standard Business Central or NAV, you would still see this header information. You'd still see the address and communication tags. But also straight away, I can see all open transactions against this customer. I can see this invoice that's overdue. I can scan down this list and I can see that there are no payments that's still waiting for application. So I do know that this invoice is still outstanding. 
I can see that um, in the past, I have interacted with this customer twice, either by email or by phone. I can click on that and read those interactions. Um, but let's say I've, I've looked at this um, outstanding amount. I'm a little bit worried and I'm gonna give um, Alpine Ski House a phone call, sorry, School of Fine Art, a phone call just to uh, make sure that everything's okay. I would create a new customer action. Um, it takes me through a wizard. I'm contacting the School of Fine Art. I can specify which person at the School of Fine Art I actually speak to or spoke to. Um, in this case, there's only one, so I'm gonna to speak to Megan. And I just fill in a few details about this phone call I'm having with Megan from School of Fine Art. It's a normal priority at the moment. I put in a quick description, a call to Megan, I hope I spelled that right. Um, it's outbound, initiated by us. I'm making a phone call. I could be sending an email or a letter. Um, and if this is just a quick phone call and Megan said, yep, everything's fine. They've just done a bit of an office move. That's why the payment's delayed. I might, you know, close this while I'm logging it. And I still get the option to put in some notes here and, you know, um, Megan talked about uh, Office Move. A little bit of an explanation as to why the uh, payment is late. And I finish. Um, it's got the interaction here. I can see some details about when I was speaking to who, when it was modified, the notes that I made. I've only got one line on this interaction because I opened it and closed it in the same step. Um, I can always go back and edit that note and put in a few more details if I want. And if there's a particular document that we discussed, I can attach that document to this interaction so that the next time I come and look, I can see, oh, that's what we spoke about. So this is a very quick and simple interaction with this customer. And when I come back to the customer's code, I can now see there are three interactions recorded against the School of Fine Art. I can click on that. I can look at those interactions. Um, any one of them I can open up. And again, I'm back there. I can see the details of this interaction. So I've spoken to Megan and You'll notice at the moment I have two open actions. A few weeks have passed and we still haven't received payments for this invoice. I'm going to speak to Megan again. So I will go back to that customer. And I can record once again a new interaction with that customer. Or I can even come down and I can choose, it's this invoice I want to speak to her about. So I'm just gonna make sure I've highlighted this line and I am going to create an action based on this actual invoice. It will bring me through to the same wizard again. I can record that I'm speaking to Megan in particular. And this time, I've got a few more options here. It's not just a general conversation anymore. This time I've really hassled Megan and she's agreed that she will make payment by the end of the week, for example. So I'm turning this one into an agreed payment interaction. I can change the priority and make it a, a high priority interaction. Um, it's put in the description for me um, that it got from the that invoice itself, the 693680 is in there. Again, it's a phone call. I'm not going to close this interaction until I actually receive this payment. So I put in next, I put in the story, uh, Megan agreed, etc. And I finish. Now I've created the interaction, but I have left it open. So you notice there's no closing line here. And there's the actual invoice that we spoke about that's been attached to this interaction. So Megan's promised she's going to pay by the end of the week. 
And now every time I log on to my system, I can now see I have an extra activity that I need to be aware of. And one of those activities is a high priority. I can click on these tiles and I can go and reopen up those interactions just to review what's happened. And you'll notice that my agreed payments have increased. Um, I can click through on that and see what these agreed payments are. Um, there's one from Ian, there's this one from Megan. Um, if Megan makes payment uh, this afternoon, I can come in, I can go to this interaction, I can close it so that it will disappear from my tiles. Um, but you can imagine I might have a lot of these interactions uh, with a big long list down here. So what I can also do at the end of the week, I can go and process and I can ask the system to go and look through any of these invoices that are referenced in any of these promised payments. It will go and check and see if they have been paid and the payment has been applied to the invoice. It will automatically close all of these tickets for me that have been paid. I do get the option to close them manually myself, um, but I can let the system do that automatic um, update for me. The nice thing about this, if I go to that um, agreed payments, um, I can download this into Excel. So if my financial director is perhaps asking me how much money are we going to collect this month, Ian? I can go and look at my customer's debt in total on maybe the age debtors report and say, yeah, 80% of what's current we should collect by the end of the month, plus all of these things that customers have promised to pay for chasing up overdue payments. So I'm confident when I give him the information, I've actually got some numbers to back it up. And he can be confident that the information I'm giving him is not just something that I've sucked out of my thumb, I've actually got promises from customers that they're all going to pay this money. Um, all of this functionality, um, it does not have any impact on what you already have. So if you want to carry on doing things the old fashioned way and you know six people in your organization use the credit control notepad, but you want to do it the old way, you can still carry on doing things the old way. If you have any customized reports, uh, maybe using Jet Reports or Power BI to give you information about your current debtors situation, those reports will continue working. They're not going to be affected by this functionality at all. Um, and the nice thing is we have built this functionality based on what our clients have told us they would like to see. So this is pretty bespoke for the UK market. Um, these are the kind of things that credit controllers within the UK are expected to keep track of. And we've tried to put them in one easy place um, to just make life simpler, quicker, and more efficient for credit controllers. Um, that's pretty much what I have for the demo today. Um, Karen, I don't know, have you got any questions coming through? Yes, I have. So the first one is says, if you interact with a customer by email, can you save the email into actions rather than having to go back into Outlook to view the sent email? Um, okay, that's a very good question. Off the top of my head, I'm not 100% sure. Um, so I will have to ask someone who knows a little more than me and whoever's asking that question, Karen, if you can just let me know, I'll send them an email with a full answer. Sure. Uh, there's another one saying, can you create an interaction that covers two invoices? Um, yes, you can. So when we created that invoice against one, sorry, we created the interaction against one invoice and it gave us, um, let's just open it up. So we did have the um, interaction details here. And now, because I'm doing it live, it's decided to go slow. And we've got at the bottom the invoice that this is related to. I can always add a new invoice, a second invoice, or a credit note. So if there are two or three documents that go together, 
we can add them and put them on the same interaction. Anything else, Karen? Yep, uh, I've got another one saying we have had a filter added as there are two credit controllers in the team and we deal with different services that go across the same customer. Can we use this filter to show the invoice customer relevant to each of us? Um, that would be a slight tweak. So as I said, on your home page, um, you can select which customers you want to see in your list. Um, if you go and look at the standard list you see all the customers so you can still help your colleague out if they're on leave um, but that's the only filter you choosing which customers you want to see um, or if you're the credit control manager you can actually assign to your credit controllers which customers they see it doesn't necessarily filter down which transactions on that customer a credit controller sees but we could tweak the system if that's something that you really need um, just got one more. Can you have multiple debtor ledgers on here that show separately? Multiple debtor ledgers. As they have uh, different companies with their own ledgers. Okay, so if you have different companies, I'm just logged into one company here. I can go up, I can log into one of my other companies and I can have a different list of favorites on that company. So I would see for company A, the customers that I'm responsible for. For company B, I would have a different list of customers that I'm responsible for. So I think that's a yes, but if that's not quite what you were asking, please let me know and I will give more details. Okay, no problems. Um, so um, I'm just going to go back now to the um, presentation. If you do think of any other questions, um, feel free to drop us a line. I'll give you the email afterwards um, to let you know that this is an add on from T-Vision and it's available for all versions of NAV and Business Central. Um, however, there are some additional um, areas that we've added for versions 2016 onwards. So just to make you aware of that. Okay, I'm just going to go back and change myself back to the presenter. Hang on a second. Okay, Ian, can you see my screen? I can. Wonderful. Okay. Okay, so we'd like to leave you with some key takeaways about um, the credit control notepad. Um, so to start with, you know, before you, you kind of look into this a little bit further, um, have a look at what's standard in Business Central. Is that enough? Um, and if not, you know, it's probably worthwhile making a list of the areas that are lacking and to see if the credit control notepad can actually help. Um, second of all, have see a uh, credit control notepad it is designed to help you achieve your targets for revenue collection and debtor days by spending less time on getting the payments and more time on the analysis you can look into average debtor days in more detail and understand the areas of improvement each, uh, as each interaction is logged it does make it a lot easier to share tasks so if you are working as part of a team you can easily see the progress that's been made so you don't have to rely on emails from other people to get an update and of course, the information is central on the system. So, you know, hopefully by using the credit control notepad, you no longer have information on different spreadsheets with different versions, all on different people's PCs and uh, networks and things. You have one central place where you know the information is correct. And as I just mentioned, some features are only available for versions 2016 onwards, such as promise payments, for example. So if you are on an older version of NAV and credit control is a major area within your business, you may want to consider upgrading to the latest version of Business Central on premise or moving on to Business Central software as a service. OK, so we hope you found this webinar interesting and informative. Uh, as mentioned, this is the 26th in a series of webinars and we'll be sending out emails soon to register for the next one. But we'll also put a reminder about the webinars in the newsletter as well. So thank you for attending. Uh, when I close this session, a survey will appear. It would be great if you could respond with uh, any feedback. But if you do have any further questions, feel free to email them to me at marketing at tvisiontech.co.uk. Thanks very much. Thank you.